Hi everybody, JD N Zero IRS here. We're going to do a quick uh, review of the Digital Reflectometer mainframe model DWM-2, made by Applied Engineering Science Incorporated. This is basically a watt meter. Okay, you can see the uh, the front panel of the unit right now, and you've got a power switch on the left, system reset, and of course you've got your resistive touchscreen uh, display. Three. Okay, we'll go ahead and spin the unit around so you can get an idea of the uh, the uh, look of the cabinet and we get to the back of the unit here and you can see we have our mains uh, voltage input which of course is disconnected at the moment you've got your four ports A, B, C and D and then a warning to use only with approved AES directional couplers and of course you've got the manufacturer's label as well as your serial number for the unit and last but not least the FCC certification Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, power up the unit, and you'll see the unit go through a, a mounting uh, slash boot up procedure. And you'll see a screen come up here in a moment that allows you to configure the couplers and dim and brighten the display. It'll sit there for a few seconds to allow you to select those and then go into its main screen configuration that you'll see. Uh, when operating. Now you'll see right away that you've got uh, an analog power and range uh, indicator which is green. You probably saw it turn from red to green during the uh, boot up procedure. Your SWR alarm uh, 3.1 is green. I'll show you in a minute uh, what happens when your SWR is above 3 to 1. Then you've got your port selection A, B, C, and D. Now this is an auto this is does not automatically sense the RF on the report that you're transmitting on so you'll actually have to physically change to the port that you want to read you've got your range selection 20 200 and 2000 watts then you have your mode select which is either operate or tune and I'll demonstrate that also in a minute over at the top you've got your forward power display showing 2000 watt scale then you've got your VSWR which reads from 1 to infinite I wish this was more of a refined scale between 1 and 10 maximum. Uh, something such as 1.3, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, etc. Uh, but evidently the uh, manufacturer has chosen to use this wide scale uh, for a commercial uh, testing environment where you may possibly see an SWR above uh, 10 to 1. Okay, a little bit about the sensors. Uh, when you order this unit, uh, you get uh, obviously one sensor specified for either uh, 1 through uh, 30 megahertz or one that's rated for 1 through 60 megahertz to cover 6 meters. Now each uh, sensor is uh, basically calibrated at the factory. Each uh, sensor comes with a, uh, a label on it. In this case I ordered two sensors and they labeled this one for port B. And you've got forward, high and low and reflected high and low data indicated on the far right hand side. That's the data that you're going to have to have to make sure that is input in the, each of the ports uh, within the unit. Now at the very bottom of this unit is where the cable connection is made. It's an 8 pin cable and of course you've got RF in and you've got your RF out as well and these are SO239s. Now if you want type ins you gotta let them know because that's an additional charge. Okay, we've uh, taken the back of the cover off the sensor just to show you what's inside. And as you can see, it's a uh, very professionally done circuit board. And there's really nothing inside that uh, you as an operator will ever have to uh, deal with. But for demonstration purposes, I, I did want to show you the, uh, the unit inside with the cover off. Okay, if we turn the unit over on its back, you can see the uh, connection location for the 8-pin uh, connection cable for the sensor to connect to the unit itself. Okay, now we'll go ahead and uh, we'll turn the unit back on so you can see how to get into the uh, the menu uh, to verify or reset the uh, values for each individual coupler. And that screen will come up in just a minute. We'll go ahead and tap this. And you can see the uh, switch has moved to the left. In a few seconds it'll uh, boot up to that screen. Okay, okay now you're looking at the uh, setup screen. Uh, to set the uh, 
individual coupler configurations that are marked uh, on the units themselves. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and read uh, port B which is the coupler that I have currently not connected to the uh, radio and what we'll do is we'll move this down to port B and then we'll go ahead and tap read ports and you see it went into an executing mode and now we're seeing a value of 124 for high a forward a value of 143 value of 132 for reflected coupler high and then a value of 170 for re reflected coupler low now if we go ahead and just pull up our sensor in front of the uh, camera here we'll see that we see a 124 143 132 and 170 for coupler B and going back to the menu you see that's an exact match uh, in the unit itself now if for some reason you move it to a different port you buy an additional sensor where they have not input the data into it you'll have to do it yourself so you'll basically just want to uh, switch the unit to whatever port you're uh, connecting to and then of course you'll adjust these values on these sliders and then of course you'll uh, save the data and then of course you'll exit the configuration we'll go ahead and put that to uh, A and we'll go ahead and read that particular port and you show it 161, 217, 115 and 143 which matches port A sensor that I have connected to the radio right now obviously again if you make any changes you want to save the data and then you'll want to exit the configuration and then it'll boot into the main screen that you'll see in an operating mode okay as we mentioned before this unit has an SWR alarm indicator which currently is green which means we're below 3.1 or better and then of course we've got a range selection alright right now we're connected to the ICOM 7600 and I think we're set around 60 to 75 watts we'll go ahead and put this down to a 200 watt scale and we'll go ahead and leave it in the operate mode just for a minute so I can show you the difference when you're in the tune mode it basically shuts the alarm off that way you don't hear the annoying uh, sound of the alarm but I'm gonna leave it in operate mode so you can see what happens when we go to tune and we're above 3.1 now we're currently been tuned for 75 meters and we're currently on 40 meters right now so I know this antenna is going to be significantly out I've got an HF auto tuner from Palstar and we'll just go ahead and uh, switch to RTTY mode real quick we'll go ahead and hit the transmit button okay as you can see uh, the uh, unit went into an alarm uh, mode the SWR alarm indicator turned red and we also got the uh, the chiming sound of the alarm as well okay you see we're at an SWR of 1.04 we're showing 67 watts out 68 watts forward and on the analog meter we're showing a power also of around 68 watts with one bar lit on the VSWR scale. Okay, we switch back to uh, 40 meters again where we know our antenna is above 3.1 currently uh, from 75 meters but this time we'll go ahead and take the mode select and go to tune and basically what that does is that shuts the uh, alarm off on the unit itself while you're tuning. Now we'll go ahead and tap transmit real quick and we'll stop transmit let the tuner catch up and we'll go ahead and hit transmit once again and we're there we're showing 66 watts uh, out with an SWR of 1.19 mode so that's a nice little feature that the manufacturer has thought about we'll go back to the operate mode and leave it there okay I've moved the uh, the range select down to 20 watts and I've left the radio at uh, around 68 watts uh, from earlier let's see what happens when we uh, we transmit okay you see the analog meter here is pegged and of course you've got a red indicator SWR is showing 1.10 
and then we're showing around 65 to 66 watts total output. So basically you get an alarm down there at the bottom. Take it up transmit and we'll go ahead and put that back to the proper scale which is 200 and we'll transmit again and as you can see now we're reading a green indicator for uh, power and range and we're reading uh, 65 watts on the uh, forward power scale. Okay a little bit about the color of the uh, cabin itself you'll see this uh, particular color is uh, kind of a royal blue and it differs slightly from the website now unless they've changed the color of the unit uh, I found that uh, this color did not match what was uh, advertised so keep that in mind when you're ordering the unit and also you might want to call them up ahead of time to make sure that uh, this is in fact the uh, the color cabinet you're going to receive okay and you also get this uh, nice uh, I think it's about a 23 page uh, spiral bound manual uh, covering the product which basically covers operation and setup. Okay, it pretty much wraps up the uh, review of uh, the model DWM-2 a watt meter from Applied Engineering Science Incorporated. This has been JDN0IRS in Kansas City and thanks for watching.